Good morning. Happy hump day, everybody. Ooh. Welcome to Great Day Washington. I'm Kristen Brissett Harris here with Ellen Bryan and Mary Marshall. And Ellen, you got big news after Election Day. That's right. It was a late night for some of us staying up to see what happened at the polls. For the first time in two decades, Democrats officially control the Virginia legislator. Can you believe it? Democrats seize victory, flipping both the state house and the Senate. The off-year election drew national attention and also massive amounts of funding from some out-of-state groups as well. And a handful of other races were being watched closely as a possible indicator for the 2020 presidential election. Democrat Andy Bashir declared an upset victory in Kentucky's tight gubernatorial race, but current Republican, Republican Governor Matt Bevin has not conceded yet. Bevin mm -hmm. is down by less than one percentage point in a state uh, President Trump won by nearly 30, so he can ask a court to approve a recount. Meanwhile, Republicans kept their hold on the governor's office down in Mississippi. Hmm. It's always interesting with these early races, these off-year races of how they analyze it and what right. this all I was means. Going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yes. They're always predicting. Okay, that flipped. The House and Senate flipped in Virginia. What does that mean? You know that now you are governor in Virginia is Democrat, and your House and Senate. So. We'll see what that trend. changes well, we for wonder next year. too when it comes to the elections like that. Like they say this is a predictor, but then sometimes when you have these off year, those that maybe didn't vote or weren't going to vote and think it was maybe mm -hmm. are spurred to vote for the next election. So right. it's going to be another big campaign spot. It still seems so. quite polarizing, though. Yeah. Um, for for a off year election, very polarizing. Right. It's become a purple state now, as we mm -hmm. call no, it. We're it's all going to come together in 2020. No divisiveness next year, all at the election. I like the kidding. sound of that. <laughs> That's not that would be great. <laughs> Ladies, we need to talk about something. I have a question for you all. Do you think that live TV musicals should end? Should we just get rid of them? I don't know if you saw last night, but the Little Mermaid live aired and it also sunk, according to many <laughs> critics. ABC aired the special to celebrate the Little Mermaid's 30th anniversary. This was an all star cast. Uh, you, you notice everyone there in that photo, Queen right? Latifah. Uh, Queen Latifah, John Stamos, the, um, the lady who played Ariel, she, Ariel. She was the one who is the voice of Moana, so you probably listened yeah, to that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, but people just didn't like it, and we've seen this over and over. Rent Live was kind of the that same was a boss, way, right? Here, here's my take, and Ellen, I know your take will be interesting. <laughs> I feel like when you try to do live theater on TV, it's just not the same. Mm. It's, you don't, the live experience is to give you that intimacy with the cast, and you can't get that through the television on a, mm -hmm. on stage. Right. It has to be produced for TV or, so I, th I think, uh, and I think musicals can sometimes be a tough sell uh, for TV markets. I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's guys and dolls, like. Guys I'm probably, and dolls, that's um, your pick. Oh, that's my pick. <laughs> <laughs> Guys and dolls, luck be a lady tonight. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's guys and dolls, like I'm. You're not in. Probably not. Yeah, just me. And we were listening to some of it this morning, and it didn't even sound good. Some of them were off right. key, Ooh. and I mean that's the that's the um, challenge you take in live theater too. But I'm with you. We're theater people, but right. it's it's fun to see these childhood historical mo movies, iconic movies, come to life. But it was people were panning the crabs outfit because he yeah. didn't really have <laughs> claws, <laughs> claws on. Right. Saying he looked like Britney Spears from her oh, like, red spandex terrible. or you know latex I, thing. I think they're terrible, but as a musical theater lover, I still love that they do this on I key. I don't want it. it to end. They're awful. She was not on key on no, some of those songs bad. yesterday, but bad. I still love it because it's just that little it. bit. It's not the same. You're right. <laughs> sitting in a theater, but it's still something. It's just yeah. Something. It's it's it's, it's it. bringing that to a group of people and people that maybe think they wouldn't like the theater or yeah. can't afford to go to the theater right. or don't want to sit there in close quarters but they got to be a little bit better they just haven't been very good recently <laughs> yeah. no that's true okay another question for you all um should artists tamper with classics so here's what i mean john legend rewrote the classic christmas song baby it's cold outside now there are many celebrities who heard this they're not a fan of this rewrite including the talk sharon osborne and Dean Martin's daughter also got in on this. She said it's stealing the thunder of the original composer. And if he didn't like the original, he should have just written a brand mm. new song. Ooh, sharp. Now, Baby It's Cold <laughs> Outside was criticized. One right. radio station wouldn't even play it last yeah. Christmas season yeah. because of the Remember lyrics sounding like it was almost sexual assault in some way. Mm. Yeah, the people lady was trying saying, to leave and then he kept right. saying, no, have another drink. Right. And then the, the original people uh, defending it, saying it's just a fun, flirtatious thing. Mm -hmm. um, Is it okay to rewrite it? 
I don't know. They always say, make it your own, mm. right? When it comes they to these. everything, right. though. Yeah. They redo yeah. the melodies of things. Um, if you don't like it, don't listen to it. But he has the creative right the, to do it. Yeah. And if he's offended by it, then hey, maybe I, let's try. I don't know. I thought this would be really well received. I thought people in the Me Too movement would be like, good, we are making progress, we're making change. And then everyone said, no, no, no. no. It was funny. I thought, oh, this was going to go the exact opposite way. And now everyone says, this is terrible. I mean, I, I thought there was nothing wrong with the original, the classic, the mm, original right, one. It was, right. I mean, it's been around forever, but that's what people are going to do. They are going to remake things. And, you know, if we don't like it, we can just. Turn the listen channel. To it. You have that choice. I love how we're turning the knob on our <laughs> I own know. Slow radio. I know. We don't to do that anymore. But I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm pressing stop <laughs> on your iPhone. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, did you guys hear Richard Gere and his wife, Alejandra Silva, they are expecting another child, according to Us Weekly and People. They just welcomed their first child in February. Now they're getting ready for back to back babies. Here's the thing Silva is 36 years old, Gear is 70. 70 stuck out to me to have another baby back to back. So here's my question today Is there such a thing as being too old to have kids? I think it depends. I mean, you always hear people wanting, my husband and I talk about it, he's in his late 40s. So it's like, mm. Uh, if you want to have a baby, we got to do this because I want to be able to run around with the baby and have right. all that energy. So if right. he's in good health and he feels good, I mean, they, I know they're celebrities, so they probably have a lot of help. But right. I don't think is, if it's a warm, welcoming family, I don't think there's an, a too old of an age. Yeah, Me either. Yeah. I think that that's a personal choice and it's nobody's right to say, oh, you're too old or too this. Like, live and let live, be fruitful and multiply. And if right. that child is bringing him joy... Go right ahead. I mean, I know 70, you're like, geez, when this child is 20, <laughs> right. my dad's going to be 90. 90 at your uh, high school graduation? But that's their issue, yeah. not mine. Right. <laughs> so. As long as they're so warm strange. and loving, then. I hate that we can't have, obviously, this is, we can't have this conversation for women. We obviously have that mm. cutoff time well, where it's like, that, we can't be 70. That's the biological, right? so, I mean, yeah, I not much we can do about that. Not a whole lot we can change there. But we saw it a lot with, like, Hoda. She adopted two girls. That's, that's right. And, she that's did. Right. You know, and yeah. she's. Uh, she's so happy. And so she happy. She said she finally found her purpose. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes yeah. It, it takes that while to realize, okay, I'm, I'm done talking about myself or this, my life being about myself. Mm -hmm. I want to give my love to somebody else. So, yeah. right. congrats right. to them. Yeah, I yeah. know. Oh, you gotta have that energy. All right, the Queen of England is ditching her iconic fur coats. The Queen's longtime dressmaker, Angela Kelly, wrote in her new memoir that from this year on, the Queen's cold weather attire will be made with faux fur. Hmm. And that's only for new garments. So, anything she has in the past that she wants to wear, she's gonna wear. The UK banned fur farming two decades ago, and now activists are praising the Queen for this move, but now asking the government to ban selling fur garments. Hmm. It's there coming it's, coming around. It's the trend. Yeah. Gucci's the trend. doing Furs it. Out. Calvin Klein. I mean, all your major brands right. are doing this, and they Fur felt like they needed to follow suit. Out. Mary, you're going to be back a little bit later to tell us how cold it's going to get this weekend. I don't know if you want to hear it, Kristen, no. but yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more Great Day after this.